My parents treated everyone exactly the same. And because of this, they became a threat to other people in power because everyone else loved my parents because they treated everyone with dignity and respect. Going to Mark's point, from my parents' example, here's a question I learned to ask myself every night when I put my head down and I go to sleep. Was I the same person in every room that I walked into? Very easy question. Yet most people, especially those in leadership positions, coaching positions, fail it miserably. I have many coaches that when the cameras are on, they were Mr. Charming, but behind closed doors, they were Mr. Hyde. And the saying goes, no man can serve two masters, and I add, especially if those two masters reside within the same psyche. Because you're like, coach, you said this yesterday, but now we're doing this today. I don't know who we're following. I guess you have to go at the whim of your moods. And maybe it's my hearing loss by having advantage, but I'm actually really introverted. I know everyone thinks I'm an extrovert because I do this. I just get to talk. I don't have to listen to anybody. <laughs> so at soirees or gatherings, I'll usually be standing in the corner and I'll just watch people. And I'll watch their body language change depending on who they're talking to. So a lot of people are not the same person every room they walk into depending on who they're talking to, if they have money, if they don't have money, if they can help their career or not help their career. And it's amazing how many people think others don't watch this. It's insane. Whereas if I had a coach that I knew if he treated everyone exactly the same, because side note, double standards are the quickest way to kill your team. You will destroy your team with double standards. If someone can get away with murder and someone cannot doesn't work. I had a lot of coaches that were that way, but when the coach was consistent with every single player, treated everyone exactly the same, I knew that that coach would have my back when the owner put pressure on him to fire somebody. Because that coach would have no problem standing up to the owner as well. He may have been firm and hard to work with at times, but if he was consistent, I knew he would have my back as part of leadership and integrity. And here's a promise I'll make to anyone who works with integrity you will get to where you need to go. Maybe not where you want to go, but if you function in integrity, staying the same person in every room that you walk into, you will get to where you need to go in life. And when you are down, when you feel like you got nothing, and there are many times all I had was my integrity, is that little burst right there that made it easier for me to get up every morning and put my shoes on and go to work one more time knowing that I stay true to myself through it all. Because you have a lot of people that would take shortcuts, compromising their integrity to get that trophy at the end, but they don't even know who they are anymore. And they will have sabotaged a lot of their relationships and there's no one there to share it with. There's a price to pay when we go after our dreams. Discomfort, how uncomfortable are you willing to be to get what you want out of life? Everyone wants quick and easy. Those are illusions. Anything worth having does not come easy. And I only got that job, again, to be the media guy, the token guy at the end of the bench that wasn't good enough to play for $900 a month. I very easily could have cut off my nose to spite my face and said, this, the heck with you guys. I'm going to go to law school or something. Instead, I said, fine, OK. I'm going to learn how to do a radio interview. I'm going to learn how to do a TV interview. I'm going to wear that Dr. Seuss hat at the elementary and go read to kids and learn public speaking. I'm going to learn how to do all these things that you're pigeonholing me into that will allow me to transition out of basketball when the time comes and make more money than I ever did as a basketball player. This is what underdogs do. You stick around long enough, eventually the tables turn. With my hearing loss, in the fourth quarter of a loud arena, everyone's deaf. So in the land of temporary deafness, the permanently deaf man is king. But you have to play into the fourth quarter. Most people stop by halftime. This is not to say that it was easy. I had pleading ulcers, paying off medical bills still. And I was so excited when we went on the road, fitting in those tiny SkyWest commuter jets. Because that meant $30 a day per diem money. You know, if I was feeling like a big spender, maybe, just maybe, I'd go buy a $5 footlong from Subway that day. But my main diet? As a professional basketball player, 26 years old, ramen noodles. 
discomfort, what price are you willing to pay? And I remember I hadn't played one point for six straight weeks. And my mom called me up one day. She said, Lance, I'm really proud of you. Why do you keep doing this to yourself? You don't have to do this to yourself. You can move on. You, you did a great job. And without being a victim, I said, Mom, because I choose to. It's my choice. It's always been my choice. Someone we don't know gave us a lot of money so you could go to school here. Still don't know that man's name. I'm alive and I've done things because I choose to, but also there was someone there to help me along the way. I've never been able to find this man and tell him thank you. But what I can do is pay it forward. And so later in that year in the Cleveland Cavaliers in 2008, when the economy hit, when they released me, I was devastated because I thought I had failed. But here we are 10 years later, utility workers paying it forward because we choose to. Paying it forward unconditionally without the attached strings of reciprocity. Paying it forward because we choose to. That's what it's about. That is truly stepping outside the comfort zone. Finding a way to give, continually paying it forward. And I know that's what you do, and you never get told thank you. But what I can tell that man that I've never been able to tell thank you is thank you for the work you do, higher education. A deaf polygamous kid like me was able to do things he did because of education, the college system, all the work that you put in. So, what I am telling you is that your work does matter. And I hope you know that. And as I say goodbye, long after I'm gone, for years to come, you make me this promise, but more importantly, you make yourself this promise. That every time you get knocked down, and you will get knocked down, plenty more times, I think we know that that you always choose to get back up one more time every single 